praise the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. We ought to rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the, the house of the Lord. And we're here today to worship and praise his name. Come on, let's give God a hand of praise for that beautiful day that he's given us to enjoy and to worship him in. Um, good morning to all. Damascus family and our Facebook friends, we thank God for you uh, being here and sharing with us as we worship God together. We're going to ask now that you will lift your voice, stand to your feet, clap your hands wherever you are, and let us sing together as we come to worship him. Good morning, good morning. How many of you want to be ready when Jesus comes? Um, when I'm out working in the yard and I'm often looking up at the sky and one day he's going to crack the sky and the dead in Christ going to rise and we just want to be ready when Jesus comes. Let us pray. O 
Oh, heavenly and righteous God, we want yeah, to come yeah. to you, Lord, this morning. Humbly, humbly as we know how, Lord. Yes, sir. First of all, Lord, just wanting to thank you. Thank you for being the great, great, great father that you are to us, Lord. Yeah. Always providing for us, even when we don't know that we're going to need provision. Yes. Yeah. Lord, this is a hard time we've gone through, but you provided the things that we would need to get through it before we even knew it was coming. We want to thank you for that, Lord. We want to thank you for a lot of things, Lord, that we might take for granted. We've been doing these outside services since Easter, Lord, and it's rained on Saturdays, it's rained on Mondays, but it's not rained on any Sundays that we've been here. We want to thank you for that. We right? want to thank you, Lord, just for providing the great leadership during this time, Lord. A lot of churches, they didn't They didn't pass this time as well as we did, Lord. No. A lot of that is because of the leadership in our pastor. Mm -hmm. So you place something in him before this time came along, Lord. Mm -hmm. Something you knew would be needed to get us yeah, through. Yeah. And we want to thank you for that. We want to thank you for the membership, Lord, because, yeah, the pastor led, but the membership followed. Amen. All right. So everything that he did, the membership was lock and step with him. Yeah. So we've come through this. Yeah, it was hard not being together, but we had the technology to be with each other. Oh yeah. We just want to thank you for that, Lord. Mm -hmm. Lord, there's a there's a light at the end of the tunnel. Mm -hmm. We just want to help you to stay focused on that, Lord. Continue to do the things that we need to do. Yeah. To get through this pandemic safe and unharmed. Oh yeah. We know you would do that because you've done it so far. Yeah. We just wanna wanna thank you for all you've done for us. Oh yes. Lord, you've always provided for us, Lord, and you know we, we know that we can call on your name. Oh, yes. As we've done during this. And we know that you will be there. Well, yeah. So we don't want this to just be a one-sided thing, Lord. We call on you and you help us. We need to help you too, Lord. Yes. There's a word to be spread in this world. That's our job. Oh yeah. You know, you give us the word, and it's our job to spread it around like fertilizer in the garden, seeds in a garden, making the word the word grow in this world. Yes, yes. So help us stay focused on our job, not just to say, yeah, the Lord provides for me. We're supposed to provide for others. That is our job as a, the children of God. So help us stay focused on our job, Lord, and yes, yes. continue to strengthen us in all we need to do. Help us to walk in your word, your will, and your way. Yes, sir. Every day. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Let us now open our books, our Bibles, if you would. Matthew, the ninth chapter. Amen. Matthew, the ninth chapter. I want us to consider verses one and two. And the Bible says, And he entered into a ship and passed over and came into his own city. Verse number two, and behold, they brought to him a man sick of the palsy, oh, yeah. lying on a bed. And Jesus, seeing their faith, said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, be of good cheer. Thy sins be forgiven thee. Son, be of good cheer. Thy sins be forgiven thee. Amen. Amen. We're going to stop there and we're going to talk just for a few minutes. Uh, he is a miracle worker. He is a miracle worker. Amen. He's a miracle worker. Do you believe that? Amen. Amen. Some of us and some people are looking for something big and great and grand, but uh, look at the person next to you right now. 
you're seeing one of the biggest miracles that God has done. Well, Amen. 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 Join in with me if you believe that and tell that person you are looking at a miracle. Amen. Do you really believe that that should excite you because you are a miracle? And we thank God that he is a miracle worker. When we look at the book of uh, Matthew here, we see that uh, he writes about Jesus and he shows us some things about Jesus that's so important. Yeah. When you look at the beginning of the book, it gives us the person of Christ and the fact that he is the son of God. It talks about his uh, virgin birth, his being born uh, to a virgin named Mary. It talks about his being baptized in the River Jordan and talks about his being tempted in the wilderness. We talked about that in the past that after he was baptized, the Bible says that God testified to the world that was gathered. He said, Behold, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And yes. a dove sat upon him. Yes. Testifying to the world, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit there gathered together glorifying God. And immediately the Bible says that he was led into the wilderness to be tempted. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Amen. Yeah. It goes on to talk about not only the person of Jesus but it talks about the principles that he taught. It talks about when you get to the sixth chapter, it gets to talk about the Sermon on the Mount, and he gives us principles for living, how we can live in a way that blesses others and please God. Amen. 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 And then it goes on as we consider the book of Matthew. It talks about not only the person of Christ, not only the principles that he talk, but it talks about the power that he has. Yes, sir. How many know that the God we serve has all power? Yes, sir. You gotta understand something. There's a bunch of, there's many different powers at work in this world. Even Satan has power. Satan has more power than you or I, but Satan does not have more power than God. Right. See, the God we serve, he's not a God of power, he's the God of all power. Yeah. Amen. In heaven and in earth. The God we serve is more powerful than any force that come against us. He's greater and stronger than anything that you can face. Amen. The God we serve, as we look at this uh, book of uh, Matthew, we see that he's not only the God that has power over demons, he has power over sickness, he has power over death. This God that we serve has all power in his hand. Amen. Aren't you glad you serve the God of all power? That's why as children of God, you got to understand something. you got to not be so upset and thrown off by things that happen in life. By the things we see developing and happening. We don't need to be thrown off by those things. Why? Because the God we serve has all power. He is sovereign. Amen. And he can do what he wants to do. And guess what? If he doesn't want something to happen, it won't happen. Amen. Even Satan, as we look at the book of Job, when the sons of God was going up to God and he looked around and Satan was with them. And he said, what are you doing? He said, oh, I'm just going to and fro, uh, seeing who I can mess up. God said to him, you consider Job? He said, well, you know, I, yeah, I consider Job, but I can't do nothing with Job. Why can't you do anything with Job, Satan? Because God has a hedge around him. Yeah. Amen. How many know if God's got a hedge around you, nothing formed against you will prosper? Amen. If God's got a hedge around you, nothing that comes against you will have a serious effect on you. Because God cares for his own. And listen, if God be for you, he's more than the whole world against you. Have I got a witness here? Amen. Oh, my brothers and sisters, God we serve is a great God, and he has all power in his hand. Yeah. When we open our text, we find that he boards the ship, and he comes back into Capernaum. Why does he leave, uh, uh, why does he leave Gadara and comes to Capernaum? Well, he leaves Gadara because they, they tell him to leave. Oh, yeah. 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 They ask him to leave. I guess you can't really tell God anything. Yeah. 
They asked him to leave the region. You remember, don't you? When he cast out those demons and that man that was causing havoc and hurting himself and was a menace to society. You remember how he was cutting himself and he was living among the tombs and he was doing his own thing and, and nobody could constrain him and Jesus comes and when he sees Jesus, he bows down and worship him and he asks, what are thou to do with me before time? And Jesus said, who are you? He said, my name is Legion. And he said, what? what? He said, will you allow me to go into the swine? And you know what happened, don't you? When Jesus said yes, in other words, he gave him permission. How many know Satan can't do anything without God's permission? And you need to trust God enough to know that if God is for you, he's more than whatever comes against you. And you're okay. No matter what you're going through, you're okay. No matter what you back, what you face, you're okay. No matter what's coming upon you, you're okay. Why? Because the God we serve is greater than anything that can come against you. You remember, don't you? Those demons went into those swine. The Bible said the swine, when they became uh, infected with those demons, that they went over a cliff. Even a swine did not want to live with demons in them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That man was doing fine, but the swine said, no way. Amen, somebody. And immediately, instead of praising Christ and being thankful for what he did, they said, listen, you'll upset our economy. How many know the world is more concerned with commerce than they are the common salvation and the rights and the will of humanity? They're concerned about commercialism. And it's all about capitalism. You got to understand that. Don't get caught up in what's going on. I know what's happening in the world, and sometimes we're looking at ourselves, but honey, it's not about you. Yeah. Amen. We're just really players on this uh, field. It doesn't, we're not important at all. It's about commerce. Yes, sir. And commercialism, yes, sir. capitalism in this world we're living in. So they said, Jesus, we need you to get out of here. Where? You're causing us problems. You're messing with our business. You're upsetting yeah. our standard of living. You're messing up our way of life. Yeah, yeah. 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 My brothers and my sisters, yeah. Yeah. let me warn you before I move on. Yeah. Bible said they invited or asked Jesus to leave. Yeah, sir. And our text picks up with him leaving and coming back into Capernaum his home base. Now, be mindful of this. Listen to me very carefully. Because there's not a record of Jesus ever going back to Gadara. Yeah. What does that mean? Yeah. That means you better be careful oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. when you reject him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You never know when yeah. your rejection is the final rejection. You never know when you won't get another chance. Amen. So I want to encourage you while you have a chance you better answer the call and receive the gift that God offers to you. Have I got a witness here? Here he is now. He's in Capernaum. The Bible says when he comes in it says that he comes into his own city and because we understand what happens when Jesus shows up, it gets noisy because people talk about this man, Jesus. Amen. If you've ever had an experience, if you've ever experienced anything around him, you can't help but talk about him. Have I got a witness? See, I'm concerned when there are Christians that have experienced the power, the presence, the blessings of God, and they never talk about it. Yeah. They never lift him up. Yeah. We engage in all conversations besides conversations yeah. about him yeah. and his goodness. That's right. yeah. My brothers and sisters, it's noise as we find in, a, in the book of Mark. It was noise that Jesus was there. Yeah, yeah. The Bible says that some friends brought this man to Jesus who was paralyzed. Yeah. Well. This paralyzed man was brought to Jesus. Jesus looks at him. He looks at the Bible says these men. And he says to the man. 
be of good cheer. Your sins are forgiven you. Your sins are forgiven you. Oh, we've seen the person of Christ. We've seen the principles of Christ. We've seen the power of Christ. Now we see the pardon that Christ offers. He told this man, your sins are forgiven you. Who can forgive sin? The crowd says, nobody but God. That is correct. Only God can forgive sin. Listen, I know we put a lot of stock in people, but there's nobody living that can forgive you of your sin. Oh, there's nobody living that can give you a pardon that makes you right with God. Only God can forgive sin. They were right in that assertion. Only God can forgive sin, but they missed it because they failed to understand that Jesus was God. And because he was God, he had the power to forgive sin. So in our text, we find that Jesus, listen, normally when we see Jesus, he'll tell the man to get up and walk, and then your sins are forgiven. Normally, Jesus deals with the physical needs of a person, and then he addresses the spiritual needs of a person. But I want you to remember, and I want you to make a note of this. In this particular text, Jesus did not deal with, yes, the physical condition before he dealt with the spiritual condition. My brothers and sisters, your biggest need is not physical, it's spiritual. Amen. Your biggest need is not uh, physical, you got to remember that, but it is spiritual. Yeah. Too many people miss it because they want to come to Jesus, because they want Jesus to get them out of something. Yeah. But see, you need to understand, Jesus want to put you into something. Yeah. Yeah. See, everybody, listen, what I'm talking about so many times, we want to turn over a new leaf. But I want to tell you, you don't need a new leaf, you need a whole new tree. The Bible said if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. You don't need to just do better. You need to be made better. And only God can do that. Have I got a witness here? Jesus said, be of good cheer, son. Your sin are forgiven for you. I want to tell you the God we serve is a God that can and he will forgive sin. See, what you need to understand that it's not just Yes, a physical thing is going on because what we find ourselves doing is just dealing with not only that, what we like to deal with is the consequences of sin. We like to deal with the guilt or the guilt of our sin. But what we need to do is deal with the sin. Too many times we don't get to the root of the matter. We only deal with the symptoms, not the cause. Yeah. But I want to tell you, the God we serve is a God that will take care of the cause. Yeah. The cause of your condition. See, if you only fix the condition, then the cause still remains. So that's the problem in our world today. We have a lot of people that want to be changed. But what they do, listen, they do a reformation. They want to change their action, change their mind, change their way. But I want to tell you, you need more than your mind and your way and your action change. If you're going to be right with God, you got to have a change of heart. Have I got a witness here? I want to tell somebody, you don't need a reformation. You don't need to just do better. You need a transformation. And I think that's what's wrong in our world today. Everybody walking around saying they're Christian because they've had a reformation. But I want to tell you, you need more than a change of mind. You need a change of heart. And I want to tell you, only God is able to change your heart. And see what's wrong with looking for God. And I hear people all the time saying, if I could have lived when he walked this earth, if I could have seen the miracles that he did. But I want to tell you today that the God we serve, he is a miracle worker. Have I got a witness here? Well, if you want to know how I know, he is a miracle worker. Because I'm looking at some people that God has touched your heart and you're not what you used to be. I want to tell you, I'll be the first to confess I'm not all that God wants me to be. But I thank God I'm not what I used to be. But I believe that when God gets 
is through with me. I come forth as pure gold. Have I got a witness here? And listen, my brothers and sisters, if you agree with me that God is a miracle worker, if you believe that your life is a miracle, that God has done a change in your life, then I want you to stand to your feet and give God some praise because God is a miracle worker. If you want to know how good he is, just look in the miracle. I mean, just look in the mirror and see what God has done, the changes he's made in your life. Have I got a witness here? Look around, look around at those around you. Have I got a witness here? I know God is a miracle worker because he's changed my life. I'm not what I used to be. And the truth is, He's changed your life. Some of us was liars, but now we are truth seekers and truth tellers. Ain't he all right? Some of us was backstabbers, but now we're hopeful. Up. Some of us have got a witness. Yes, have done many things, but God changed our lives. Listen now, when I look at this text, Jesus said, your sins are forgiven. They said nobody can forgive sin, but the God of heaven. Jesus said, what is easier for me to say your sins are forgiven or to take up your bed and walk when Jesus told the man to take up his bed and walk. The man began to get up. Have I got a witness? His legs got strength. The man stood up and took that bed and made his way. Well, many times people want to argue about the reality of Scripture and the reality of Christianity. Well, there's some things that you can debate, but there's one thing you can't debate. That's a changed life. Have I got a witness? story I read, there was this little boy and little girl who were living in a troubled home. They went to a camp meeting. They went, yes, and heard about Jesus, how Jesus saves and changed lives. They came home, having accepted Jesus, began praying for mama and praying for daddy. They kept on praying for said and said come here that stuff you're talking about it's not real your dad is not saved and you're not either the little boy and little girl looked up at the old man and said sir i don't know much about what you're talking about i don't know if it's really real or not but do me a favor and don't tell my daddy because since daddy got saved, he don't come home drunk no more. Since daddy got saved, he don't beat up on mama no more. Since daddy got saved, he don't have to hide in the closet no more. Since daddy got saved, he bring home his paycheck now. Since daddy got saved, I don't have to go to bed hungry.
one day I heard the voice of Jesus say, come unto me and rest. I came to Jesus just as I was. I was weary, worn and sad, but I found, I found, I said I found in him a resting place. Somebody, if you want to see a miracle, just look at me. Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? He's able to change your life. I need my 10 people that don't mind being on a witness. I want you to stand again and lift your hands toward heaven. And say yes, I'm a witness of the power of God. He's a miracle worker. I'm not what I used to be because the Lord is working on me. He picked me up. He turned me around. He placed my feet on solid ground. He's a miracle worker. Come on and give him praise. Yes, he is. What he's done for us, he'll do for you. I thank God. I thank God. I listen to the naysayers. I hear the arguments. I sometimes entertain the debate. But I know. I don't know what he's done for others. But I know what he's done for me. And you can't make me doubt him. I know too much about him. What he's done for me. Amen. And I know he's a miracle worker. Whatever you got going on in your life, he's able. He's able. And he'll do it. He's got the power. You got to trust him. You got to have faith. You got to believe that God will do what he said he would do. Come on and give him praise. Confess it to me. And God will do it. He'll fix you. He'll heal you. He'll forgive you. He'll do what he said he'll do. But you gotta come. You gotta come clean to him. And come clean with him. Confess your sin. He is faithful and just to forgive you. And cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Do you believe that? Then we need to continue to do it. Amen. Because he's building us day by day, day by day. Amen. I started with him, and I'm going to continue with him. I believe that he that begun a good work in me will complete it on that day. I believe that. Amen. Father, we thank you for this time, this word that you've given us for this day. We ask, Father, this word to move in the hearts of the hearers. First of all, to encourage us, to strengthen us in our walk and our faith, to challenge us to be more vocal in our witness to you, more forceful in our faith, by knowing that you're able to heal, you're able to forgive, you're able to save those that are lost, those that are hurting. We pray, Father, that this message will not only encourage and challenge, but, Father, that it will change the hearts of some that are hearing, either live or via Facebook. We pray that you would do that. Father, we thank you that your love is great, that your grace, your grace is sufficient. And your grace, Lord.
can reach way down to no matter how far we are away from you, grace reach us to where we are. And we thank you for that. We ask now, Lord, that you would allow the Holy Spirit in here. Just continue to manifest the word in the hearts of those that are listening, that we will be a blessing and bring glory to your name. But this is our prayer. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on.